it just shows now that you have to be at a certain point at your 20s in order to main, maintain success for the rest of your life and that's a false narrative that's not true i'm 21 so I'm like i'm like in that stage now where it's like it's time for you to like find your niche find what you really what we're on this plan to do i feel accomplished like I, i've done something and then you'll get online and you'll see somebody that's done it times five and they're five years younger than you so it's like well dang does this even really mean anything you know you can keep pushing or focus on you get your stuff right follow your purpose get your get to your money be somebody of character versus trying to act like it or try to trade on social media or like in front of people i can't tell you to do something if i'm not doing it myself i'm running from being put in a box. i'm breaking that habit of feeling like i'm inadequate compared to a perception of someone online it's literally like how hard you want to work how good do you want to be? One thing that society values most is health and wealth, which equivalates to youth, being young. They place youth, specifically those in their 20s, on such a high pedestal to achieve all that life has to offer at such a young age. This is the time when we're not only blossoming in our health and wealth, but we reach an age of independency, maturity, and self-awareness, yet there's still so much expected from us. Social media in today's society of popular culture has shaped many lives of young people today in believing so. Especially now looking at social media, looking at just TV in general, just looking at how the world is going. Everything is set up to where you go to school, you get a job, you become successful. That is the recipe, and they don't tell you the in between and what happens in between there. Graduating right. high school, graduating college wasn't a if I could do it, it was more of a you're gonna graduate. That was the mindset that stalled me, and what I did, I graduated. But um, in my 20s, it was more of the mindset of I'm supposed to be, have everything right in my 20s. Like, I feel like sometimes I can have ways of feeling like. I'm not doing enough because in reality, what I feel like I wish a lot of us knew on social media is we're, we're right where we need to be and as long as you're working towards becoming the best version of yourself, comparing ourselves to somebody online is not going to get us closer to who it is that we need to be. When being in my 20s and looking at everybody, you know, going after their goals and doing what they want to do, it just shows now that you have to be at a certain point at your 20s in order to main, maintain success for the rest of your life. And that's a false narrative. That's not true. I believe like it's a certain time with everything, time and place. So like, not necessarily like I should have started earlier, but it's just God telling me like, hey, this is the opportunity for you. Like, it's your choice to take it or not. But we, I believe that we all have like a chance where we can like succeed and get that great length so that we're trying to get to in life. But instead, we're not really talking about the steps it takes to get to those necessary points in your 20s. So yeah, I, I do think it's harming our 20 year olds in our minds because now, like even subconsciously, you're like, well dang, I gotta be, I gotta be doing this. I gotta every two seconds, I need to be making sure that I'm being proactive or I'm doing something or I'm staying on top of what, I'm, what I said I was gonna do. And re in reality, life doesn't always go like that. And I don't think we should teach our kids or our 20 year olds that that's what they need to be doing. And I'm saying this though, I still struggle with that, with comparing myself to people online because it's just inevitable when we're scrolling all day, like you're seeing somebody just bought a Porsche and they just moved into a house and they're 18 and a half. Like it, it can definitely feel like, dang, why didn't I do this right? But I'm, I'm learning to completely dissect that and understand that as long as I'm working for me, then that's all that matters. Nowadays, we see tons of millennials caught up in what everyone else has going for them and less focused on themselves. Although social media can be used as a positive attribute, the detriment often overshadows it. These young adults elaborate on how they view social media to be now in 2020. People will portray so many different things on social media would make it look glamorous when it's really not. Social media is perception. So a lot of these people be online that I'm scrolling, I'm looking at, feeling inadequate, and they posting up looking all nice and pretty and shiny, but everything that glitters is not gold. And a lot of these people are not happy. And we're sitting here comparing ourselves to these people with all this money and these materialistic things or the relationship or etc. And they don't even really enjoy it. They just doing it 
for the photo op. It is a false narrative. Hate. It's a lot of confusion, sensitivity. The biggest thing is like this. With social media itself, is how you look at it. I see you two ways. One, it shows you a different variety of things. And you could accept that in one or two, in multiple ways. Either like, dang, this is what's possible, or dang, I'm not doing right. It's just how you see it. Some people it takes faster than other people's success, but you can't judge that because you're on God's timing. So mm -hmm. you have to look at it as like the work they put in. Yeah, so you see the results, but you have to look at the work they put in first. So like, what did they do wrong? Or like, how they got to this point? Um, what kind of support they had? What kind of environment they was in? Like different things kind of like cultivates to like what got to where they at today. So you can't look at that because you know, they might have had a bigger either fan base or support system, whereas this person had to work to get to that support system or fan base. So you know, it's just different things you have to take into account. So you just can't look at it as like the end result. At times, life can get heavy for those in their 20s. Dealing with school, work, a social life, and even running a business, the pressures of society can cause an individual to have no choice but to expose the underlying truths and insecurities needed to progress to their next stage of life. I started counseling in my senior semester of college. Fell off from it, you know, stuff kind of got in the way. And then once the pandemic hit, I really said, you know what, I have this time, let me get back into counseling. Not because I'm crazy, not because, you know, everything is just out of whack. No, that's not the case. I feel like me going in my 20s is setting myself up for my 30s because now mentally I'm able to heal from past traumas. I'm able to heal from, heal from childhood traumas. I'm able to put myself in a better mindset and space to achieve and to receive what I'm gonna, you know, achieve later on in life. My next goal for myself is about to really be too focused on myself and not just say that in a general terms, but something that's really important to me is a morning routine. I know these successful people do it. And I want to get so strict about it because it creates a self, an individual thing versus me waking up, just brushing my teeth, washing my face and logging online and being digested and flooded with what everybody else has going on. When really, if I want to just focus on my accomplishments, that's what I should focus on. It's not like I can't log on, but I don't want to measure myself or my accomplishments to anybody else. I feel like this year as a whole has been like a year of overflow. And I don't mean like, you know, overflow of blessings. It's just been everything, you know, adversity, um, blessings in itself, and like a time for innovation. So I've learned more about myself. I know now where I should put my time into and like focus on leading in the next year and, and on. So. The amount of stuff I've done at just the age of 27 is a, is a lot. But because of how my mindset is, I don't consider it that great because I haven't reached the goals I want to reach yet. Mm -hmm. But to sum this up, what I'm running towards is to be the best trainer possible, which means I'm good with my words, I'm knowledgeable, I'm a public figure, I impact my community, and like I'm, I lead by example. First create your social media accounts and how different was it back then than it is now so you can give me details like how many followers you have what your username <laughs> just whatever you want to add oh this is a fun one my first social media was facebook when i was young maybe like middle school when everybody was on my space my mom was not having that so i never had it in my space but i was on facebook in my middle school i was like 13. i ain't gonna lie um i was in the social media type of person until high school you know my cousin used to give me like you know you they be showing me stuff on social media i'm like bro you need to make you a twitter stuff so I got to stop showing you something like, you know, I might as well make one. My username is still the same. It's underscore granddaddy. You don't know, you do not know, want to know why I got the name granddaddy. One of my usernames on Twitter when I was like 16 was like, kiss him and diss him. I don't know. It was like really cool to do like <laughs> little funky stuff like that. I remember I created my Instagram back in uh, literally the year Instagram started. And when it first started, there was no videos. There was no, like, it was none of, it was none of that. It was... The filters were sucky, the quality was sucky, like there was no stories, none of that, it was just a feed. On Facebook, that's when I began to learn about like cyberbullying and all the different things and, and a lot of the things, the negative effects that we learned about social media that we know now, I can look back and see them from then. Psychologically, I think social media is a, a warped mind changer. Like I don't even know if that makes sense, but like it just changes and warps people's minds. Like. 
it's a if you don't have a strong mind social media will overtake you i feel like it's not it's not what it was created to be so one thing i do appreciate about social media is i am contrary to what people may believe i am a weird person like, mm -hmm. i feel like social media um a lot like it shed a light on different types of different people so like it was easier to see different type of different types of people and, and accept and more people are able to accept them for who they are so i do appreciate that because i feel like if i didn't have social media in this pandemic or in 2020 like you know i would still be myself but it, it would it would be i guess a little awkward or weird to interact with people because they, they they don't meet people who are personally like me every day mm -hmm. you know maybe they do see people now on social media who are completely different and it's the norm mm -hmm. or not the norm but it's you know it's easier to see and accept you know from the Black Lives Matter movement to the peak of COVID-19, the media has played a huge part in our everyday lives since the beginning of this year alone. I asked these young adults what they believe life would be like if social media was no longer around. This one is a hard question. It'd be very different. I feel like it's a good and a bad thing. Showing us, it's educating us on what's actually happening in the world. Like we can see it firsthand, but how we are being educated, I feel like is the problem. I went on social media before, but now that I was, now that I am now, I kind of see like the value and how much positive and negative influence it would have. I probably wouldn't be having this interview with you right now. Without social media, I probably would be better off just because that'll be one less thing that's taking up my time. And I can be putting that more into what I'm doing and before social media people still had successful businesses even though it's been really helpful extremely helpful to businesses I still feel like even with its absence we would still be a functional society mm -hmm. just because of social media just from my generation you just see a lot of people are rushing their goals and just saying that oh if I'm not this age if I'm not wealthy by this age or if I don't hit this certain goal by this age and I'm a failure but in retrospect you should look at it as like you know prop um, progress you know you always look at it as failing forward so you might not hit that goal but that doesn't mean you're not going to hit it eventually so you just gotta kind of like have that little you to you conversation just tell yourself like i still got this but it's always room for improvement i was just talking to a friend yesterday just saying like you know you survived through 2020 just building yourself and everything else so don't put yourself down for that you just keep going for someone between the ages of 20 to 29 someone who has always felt the pressures of their 20s coming from what society has to say about them or social media what that means they've been bullied for their looks found out their ex was cheating on them through social media downplay themselves because they see the houses and the cars that other people have and they don't have it yet like people who are really going through it what is your biggest like advice to them my biggest advice is to look look at yourself and ask yourself why do you want these things and is the answer to that question is it true to you like what is the reason why you want or see the things that you desire so bad like why do you want them because i do ask my friends this all the time well, why do you want that like they're like, well, are you? You're not. You're not supporting me. No, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, because that's not what I'm getting at here. I support it. I support you, but let's make sure that's coming from a true place inside of you, not something that you put in your head because of what you see. Uh, you gotta really fight your trials. Like you gotta like try. You can't run away from your problems. You really gotta fight it head on. It'd be better for you for the long run. Stop trying to get avoided. Stop trying to pretend that it's not there. Stop trying like do something else to pretend it's not there because I trust me being 27 that means I've been dealing with 20 since for seven years right now. Tremaine at 20 was severely different from Tremaine at 27. Tremaine at 25 was severely different from Tremaine at 27. Tremaine at 26 is severely different from Tremaine at 27. When I turn 28, it's literally what you make it to be. It's literally like how hard you want to work. How good do you want to be? You're going to grow from it. You're built for it. You're built for more. Don't let it stop you from what the rest of your years have in store for you. As these individuals take the last few moments to reflect, 
I also ask them what they are running from or running towards in 2020 as a millennial. Running from, I'm running from being put in a box. Like, I'm tired of like people looking at me or looking at us or saying, like, oh, well, defining me by what I do. Like, oh, you do this. Like, okay, but there's so much more, so much more to me than like just what you see. And what I'm running to is creativity, I think. That's what I'm running to and openness and to God, mm -hmm. and to God. Like, mm -hmm. that's how I, I feel like that's, I run closer to him every day, like more closer to him every day, more than I ever, ever have been in my entire life. Running from laziness and procrastination, um, I feel like that is lethal, um, and, it, and it plays a lot of us. Programming, I'm running away from that of like spending too much time watching TV or spending too much time carelessly scrolling and not intentionally logging onto social media. I'm working towards becoming the best version of myself. As I kind of mentioned earlier, I've noticed the most successful people in the world have a morning routine where they do what's called savers. Silence is meditating, A is affirmations, V is visualization, E is exercise, R is reading, and S is scribing, which is writing or journaling. And um, I've mastered two, and um, I really kind of feel like, I always explain to my friend, I feel like they know I want to collect all the jewels so that um, I can really just unlock the best version of myself. And they do all of this within the first hour of waking up. But it's just like being able to just master that will allow me to be able to master anything at all. I would have never thought that this would be going on while I'm 23, but it's been so amazing. Even though quarantine shut down the whole world, it was a blessing to me and allowed me to be spend time with my family and continue to learn about myself and my place in the world. Being six years before 30, that could be your definition of success or being in the career field you love could be your definition of success. Make sure that your focus is for you, yourself, and you just you. Just focus on you. Don't care about what people are trying to see about you. Don't care about what people got to talk about you. Just focus on you. Being 21 and 2020 means that although you've been through everything, it's been a whirlwind for not only yourself, but people in your generation or older. Being 23 and 2020 is learning how to become the best version of yourself. For me, I just want to make sure, the goal I have for myself is to make sure I'm just walking in the right direction. Like, because then everything else will come.